Hi there, welcome to the latest episode of my 10 Minute Moan. And the topic of this 10 Minute Moan is a thump in a recent series of things looking at Nicola Sturgeon's murky past. Now, this story, like the others, isn't new. It isn't. It's, a f- it's groundbreaking new stuff that I'm just making the public aware of. It's actually stuff that's been about the public domain for quite a while. Um, but certain things that I wasn't sure of until I started getting more interested in politics about November last year. And I kind of remember the stories from years ago, but they weren't really in there. So I started, I'd done done one a long time ago, which was about Nicola Sturgeon giving a court a letter for her defence, a guy's defence, who was getting sentenced for the second time for fraud, and Nicola Sturgeon begging for compassion and not to send a man to jail, which was weird, because the man later said that he'd never met Nicola Sturgeon. However, a friend of his who might have known him might have um, paid a lot of money for a charity lunch with Nicola Sturgeon a very short time before it. I think she paid, two, he paid about two grand for the SNP fundraiser to have lunch with Nicola Sturgeon, and that man may or may not have known the man who's up for fraud. Um, so done that story. Done another one last week. I can't remember what that was about. But, and I've had this other one about her legal career in my mind for a while, so I'm finally getting round to it. So this is the story of young Nicola, who uh, was a lawyer. Yeah, there you go. And some of you know that, and some of you know that it ended a wee bit murky. So this story I'm taking from, now the story's really old, but this version of it was put out in April 2021 by The Express. So I'm using them for the uh, information. And their headline back then was Nicola Sturgeon, the murky end to the SNP chief's legal career. And they claim it as an exclusive back then. Ben Borland wrote it. Nicola Sturgeon's legal career ended under a cloud as she was investigated for professional misconduct. It can be disclosed today. The SNP leader was eventually cleared by the Scottish Law Society more than 14 months after a complaint was made by a victim of domestic abuse. Ms Sturgeon spent several years working as a solicitor before becoming an MSP in 1999. Although this episode has never been revealed before, when she was asked in 2014 about rumours that something had gone wrong, Ms Sturgeon replied, I've got nothing I want to confess. Not I've not done anything wrong. I've got nothing I want to confess. Even her biographer, David Torrance, was unable to discover much beyond the fact that Ms Sturgeon did mostly matrimonial and civil court work. The First Minister's legal background has come under renewed focus recently as a result of the probe into the handling of the harassment complaints against her predecessor, Alex Salmon. Mr Salmon successfully challenged the Scottish Government's unlawful and biased investigation at a judicial review with the debacle costing the taxpayer up to a million quid. The top KC, or QC as it was back then, and Labour peer Lord Faulkner recently said Ms Sturgeon made a profound misstatement about legal advice she received which urged her to concede the case at an earlier stage. Scottish Conservative leader Ruth Davison, telling how story how old the story is, asked at Holyrood why did the First Minister think she was a better lawyer than Roddy Dunlop, QC and Christine O'Neill, the advocate. Miss Sturgeon replied, I did not and I most definitely do not. The complaint against Miss Sturgeon, this is when she was a lawyer, was brought by a battered wife who turned to the newly qualified solicitor for help after years of abuse at the hands of her husband. Miss Sturgeon was working at Stirling Law Firm Bell and Craig when the client, now a grandmother in her 60s, first sought help in July 96. Over the next 14 months, despite the woman being followed, threatened and physically attacked, it was claimed Miss Sturgeon did not seek a court order against the violent partner. The client also alleged that Miss Sturgeon failed to send off her legal aid application, despite claiming she had done so. After Miss Sturgeon left the firm for a new job in Glasgow, the unsent application was discovered in the file by her new solicitor, Kath Dowdles, who's now a QC. 
In stark contrast to Ms Sturgeon's inaction, Ms Dill immediately secured both legal aid and an interdict with power of arrest against the husband ending the stalking and threats. The client wrote to the Law Society in November 97, saying, I sincerely hope that you look into this case, as I certainly would not wish Miss Sturgeon to ill-advise further matrimonial cases, which she is clearly not capable of dealing with. I feel as if I have been trailed through over a year of ill-advice and wasted time. The following month, the client's outstanding fees totalling £542 were waived by Bell and Craig as a goodwill gesture. A year later, in December 98, the Law Society sent the client a five-page report which stated that her complaint would be investigated in the professional misconduct category. The three individual allegations were failing to raise the interim interdict against the ex-husband, misleading the client about legal aid application, and failing to properly take her financial circumstances into account. Ms Sturgeon was eventually cleared by the Law Society in April 1999, although the client no longer has the decision letter. A Law Society spokesperson said it was a complaint which was investigated, but it was not upheld. The decision came just weeks before Sturgeon gave up law and elected as a list MSP in Glasgow for the SNP in the first Holyrood election. Last night, the client said her decision to finally speak out after more than 20 years had been triggered by her outrage over the Salmond affair. A Holyrood committee found the two female civil servants who complained about Mr Salmond had been badly let down by the Scottish government. It described the outcome of the judicial review as being devastating for the government as well as being wholly unsatisfactory for the two women who had made complaints, the client said, it's an old story, but it is one that should be told. The way those women were let down was her responsibility, and it was completely wrong. It goes back to my story. There was no responsibility taken. How can you sail through life like that and not admit any responsibility for when things go wrong? When she told me she was moving into politics, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> An alarm bell rang and I immediately thought, that's why I'm getting nowhere. She was focused on herself and her own career. To me, that's what she was doing now as well. Where was her focus on the two women who complained about Alex Salmond? It's a case of history repeating itself. A spokesman for the First Minister said, this complaint was not upheld by the Law Society. Now more than 20 years later, the First Minister remains absolutely committed to tackling domestic abuse and ensuring that women can access the support they need. The commitment is demonstrated by Scottish Government's support for organisations dealing with domestic abuse and violence against women and by passing of new legislation creating a specific offence of domestic violence, which includes measures to make psychological abuse and controlling coercive behaviour a crime. Um, comment here by Annie Wells on the bottom of this. I admire and applaud this woman, indeed any woman, for having the strength to survive and thrive such a difficult ordeal. I also respect her right to finally speak out about this painful episode after all these years. As a young mum suffering from domestic violence, she turned to a high street solicitor for help, but seems to have been badly let down and therefore placed in prolonged risk. That her lawyer happened to be Nicola Sturgeon, the future First Minister of Scotland, is fascinating in itself, but also has some interesting parallels with recent events. Sturgeon is clearly uncomfortable with people finding out about the messy ending of her legal career, as seen by the comments she made in her biography. That her biographer did not unearth what went on perhaps suggests some effort was made to keep a lid on it. Given this happened when she was on the cusp of entering the Scottish Parliament as an MSP, perhaps that is unsurprising. Even though the court, the, even though the counts of professional misconduct Sturgeon faced were not upheld, her lawyer waived what was a relatively substantial fee in a letter titled Complaint Against Ms Sturgeon. The First Minister portrays herself as a champion of women, but this episode adds a growing body of evidence that suggests otherwise. Blah, 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 blah. And then it goes on talking about somebody we'd done a video about just the other day, Dorothy Grace Elder, who spoke out about Sturgeon and her carry-on. So I'll, I'll put a link to that video actually and you can see that. So... 
there's the story. Um, upheld, however, what is factual is. She didn't just go and get a court order to keep the man away from the woman. That's pretty day one law, I would imagine. You know, if someone came to me and asked my advice and I'm not a lawyer, I'd say probably need to go and get somebody to put an injunction against the guy coming near you. That's number one. Make you feel safe. The second thing she did was not file for the um, legal aid, which I believe from reading articles in the past ended up being time barred. So the women couldn't get legal aid and that's why the firm wrote off the bill. So obviously they should have done something wrong or they wouldn't have wrote off the bill. So those two things remain, but she didn't do the simple thing like protect a vulnerable, abused woman. That's unforgivable for any level of lawyer, regardless of who you are or where you ended up. So if you enjoyed this sort of tale or the video about it, give it a thumbs up. If you've not already done so, please hit the subscribe button and the notifications. Uh, let me know what you think of the story in the comments below. And as always, the most important thing, as long as you're not Nicola Sturgeon or any lawyer who fails to protect abused women, not you. Everyone else, have a great day. Cheerio bye now.